Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're looking at the biggest mistakes you're making with your push-up form and how to correct those. But before we get into it, make sure you take a second to hit that subscribe button down below in the corner so that you don't miss out on future videos like this. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Now. All right, guys. So today we're going to be looking at the most common mistakes that people make in the push-up position and where they're losing a lot of force, not allowing themselves to generate more push-ups or even do the push-up in the first place. Now if you watched my last video on how to do a plank properly, you might start to notice that there's a lot of similarities that transfer from the plank into this push-up today and we mentioned that in the end of that video. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'm going to put that in the cards at the end of this video so you can just click on that and touch up on your plank form to help improve your push-up form in the long run as well. But let's go ahead and get started today looking at the push-up specifically here. So the very first thing that most people begin with is an improper setup of the hand positioning. Now I can have multiple different hand positionings in a push-up, whether I'm doing a narrow diamond grip push-up or a wider grip push-up, depending on the focus that I want to have. But the important thing is my control of my elbows in that positioning. So if I set up narrow, but I don't have control of the elbows, and when I go down, my elbows are flaring out wide, generally what you'll hear is a large complaint about the pain at the wrist that they're getting. Because that puts a lot of pressure on the joint to begin with. The second mistake is setting the hands too high in line with the body, more in line with the head almost in the push up here. And people don't really have that stability, so they kind of rely on this musculature at the top of the shoulder rather than setting the hands in line with the chest and properly loading more along the side of the body here. Okay, so we want the hand positioning to be wide enough, and this is on your standard push up wide enough that when I'm in the bottom position, my elbow sits over my wrist as long as my elbows are staying down and in toward my body some, okay? And they're also in line with my chest more so than my head. So I should never feel like my hands are going between, or my head's in between my hands in this position, I should say, okay? Now the next most important thing is the shoulder positioning that I'm gonna set. So once I have a good hand positioning, I want to use my shoulders to become a strong, solid base and start to brace my core, okay? This is where we'll really start to see similarities between the plank and the push-up because essentially in the top of the push-up position, I'm setting a solid plank position. So I want to roll those shoulder blades down and back and then you'll see me lock the elbows in to get the lower um, musculature along the ribs engaged rather than the musculature up at the shoulder okay so there's no set in the shoulders normally that leaves people losing force through the shoulder when they go to push up all right so the the normal push-up that you see is the hands in a poor positioning whether it's narrow or just not in line with the chest and then when they're stepping back there's no core control here in the lumbar spine. So when I go to push up, my shoulders rise first and then the rest of my body follows and tries to catch up, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're actually beginning by bracing the core, setting that plank, holding the plank to the bottom and then keeping the tension as we return back to the top of the push up each time. Set the hands in that nice width, roll the shoulder blades down and back rotate the elbows in toward your ribs. So you'll watch me twist my elbows so I get tension right here in the underside of my armpit. Now as I do that, I'm gonna add in the abs. I brace my core from the abdomen. It should feel like you're screwing your hand into the floor almost, or trying to unscrew the, the jar of a pickle, uh, the top of a pickle jar there. So we unscrew that top on both sides, brace the abs, step back, immediately flex the glutes. You should see a nice straight line right now from my shoulder through my hip all the way into my ankle. 
my quads are flexing tight, my butt is flexing tight. I'm gonna hold this tension, take a nice deep breath into my belly, hold that breath, and then press back up, maintaining that tension. Now the biggest part that most people have trouble in is that lower portion coming back up. They can get down with that form, but then as they go to get back up, they arch the back because they lose tension from the abs and from the glutes and from the quads, okay? So what you need to focus on in this position at the bottom is actually think more about how tight your butt is, how tight your stomach is, and how tight your quads are, okay? See if you can maintain that tension and don't worry so much about the strength of your arms as much. It's not coming from there, it's actually coming from the core. Okay, roll the shoulders, elbows in at the ribs, lock in that armpit, get the abs engaged, step back, tight butt, tight stomach, keep your tension, press back away. Maintain tension, press back away. So the work that's being done comes from the quads, it comes from the glutes and the abs. It's not necessarily how strong my arms are, okay? The better my technique gets, the easier the push-up's gonna be because I'm not leaking force through joints that shouldn't be taking pressure, like the lumbar spine or the anterior part of my shoulder, okay? So there's our setup right there. Now I know <laughs> when people still have trouble with this, the most common fallback is a push-up that looks something like this, okay? Or I should say something like this. Now what you notice in this position, if I'm doing a bent knee push-up, is that I'm no longer loading my quads. I'm loading my hamstrings by curling my legs up. You'll also notice that my hip flexors are loaded because I'm not fully engaging my glutes and getting my hips pressed forward, okay? If you truly want something that's gonna transfer into a real push-up, okay, don't do push-ups from your knees. Try this. Elevate the push-up off of a bench, okay? Elevate the push-up off of some kettlebells. Anything that's gonna give you a little bit of height off the floor is starting to take a little bit of that, that difficulty away, okay? As we get lower and lower to the ground, the push-up's getting harder and harder, all right? You can also use a band and attach it to a bar on a squat rack and use that as a pulley system to help get you up. So you actually put the band around the body, lower in, the band will help pull you back up each time. So there's two ways that we can actually help modify that. If we wanna go from the floor, use the banded with the bar. So we use a resistance band and a bar, okay? If we wanna do it just body weight, no equipment, we're elevating the height off the floor using a bench, using a coffee table that's sturdy enough, um, whatever it might be. You could even do it off steps, okay? So you have different variations that can help make this process a little bit easier and build it up into the real push-up if you're not quite there yet. All right, so there you have it, guys. Make sure you leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video. Be sure to like and also subscribe if you haven't. If you need some further help with your technique or even with your exercise programming, take a moment to stop by our website and fill out that coaching inquiry and we'll get you started and headed in the right direction. Until next time, thank you guys for watching.